Welcome to Fret Knot. My name's Rob. My name's Colton, where we review, play, and discuss all things guitar. And if it sucks, we will tell you. Welcome to our channel. Welcome to the High Gain series. This will be a series of guitar reviews, and for this series we have went out and purchased 10 high-end custom guitars from custom builders all around the planet. The ones we feel like are some of the best. Yeah, we're going to talk about the construction, the build, and the playability of some of these guitars and see how they stack up against the big brain. Welcome to Fret Knot, and welcome to episode two of the High Gain series. My name is Colton. And my name is Rob. And if it sucks, we will tell you. Yes. So if you haven't seen episode one, or if you have, um, this is a series and it's just based on high gain guitars and it's based on custom builders from around the, around the, around the globe. And uh, we've just tried to pick and choose. Now listen, there's a lot more out there. We only bought 10 guitars from 10 people. There's a lot more out there and we'd like to get to them at some point, but we had to get a cutoff somewhere. Yeah. So today's episode is primarily about the illustrious Ashwood Valkyrie 7. And uh, this guitar um, took a little while to get to me, not too long. Took a little while to get to me. Uh, there's an interesting story to that. What we're going to do here in a few minutes, we're going to try to make these videos a little bit shorter for you. Uh, we're going to go into just the specs on it, tell you everything about it. Um, we're going to let you hear it, and then we're going to let you hear it in a mix, at least with, with drums. And um, then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk a little bit about the process of getting it, um, give you a kind of a ballpark area in price, and uh, tell you our thoughts on it. And then we're going to ask you guys a question because there's something we want you guys to comment on. And we are going to give you a slight preview of what we're doing next week. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of the guitar? This guitar is in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> is it that good? I love it. It's it's one of my favorite ones. So I haven't been a big seven string player. Uh, the only time I ever played seven strings was years ago, and seven strings have evolved. Uh, the last one I touched felt like a brick, <laughs> you know? And so I uh, was a little trepidatious about this, um, but we're going to get into all that here in just a second. So the next thing we want to do is we want to talk about the specs. Okay, Colton, tell us about the specs on this one. All right, so it is a 26.5 scale length. The hardware color is black. Um, we've got hip shot fixed bridge and tuners, locking tuners, um, and the bare knuckle pickups, of course. The Ragnaroks. The Ragnaroks, yes. Um, and then the uh, the fretboard is... Uh, Winge. Winge, yes. Mm -hmm. um, the fret ends are angled, and we've got stainless steel Wagner 96, 85 wide and tall frets. Okay, so I want to say something about that little section. So the fret work on this thing is amazing. There's only so much we can do with the camera to show, show you that. Uh, they're polished. Um, fret ends are angled out. Uh, there's there's nothing. I mean, it, it's as smooth as butter. Any kind of a guitar at this, we didn't elaborate it on the last one <clears throat> because any kind of guitar at this price point should just be a, an afterthought. All of that should be done. Yeah. Um, we've got a mahogany Kea body. Um, the top wood is a 4A flamed maple. And the thickness is 46 millimeters. Yes, and you can see that on the sides. We'll get into that in a minute. Mm -hmm. I'll show some pictures of it. Keep going. The flame maple binding. I don't know if you can see that around the neck. It's going to be tough because I was looking at it on camera, and it really doesn't pick up, but this whole thing is the the whole neck. Obviously, this is a neck through construction, and the two pieces of maple are are all flamed, and it shows all the way down the back of the guitar. And the, uh, the inlays, it's got luminlay inlays. Now, I'm not sure if that is on the fretboard itself no, it's or not just the dots. I didn't want it on the fretboard. On the side? Yeah, it's on the side, and then the, then we have the rings in here. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the rings are made of aluminum. <clears throat> they're aluminum inlays, just like the name on the headstock. Yeah. But they're nice. I like them. I like the aluminum inlay. It's pretty cool. Uh, what else do we have? We've got um, open pore satin. Can you tell me anything about what I'm Well, that's going to just satin. give you this look on the back. So this is an open pore look and they're just putting a satin over it as opposed to a gloss. So we're gonna have a high gloss on this front cap. 
And then we're going to have a just an open pour satin on the back. So it still feels like the wood, mm -hmm. but it's got a little sheen to it. I like that. Yeah, it looks really polished and really nice. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, the finish on the fretboard says it's smooth satin. They put a smooth satin on it. When you first see this guitar, the color of the fretboard is uh, very akin to a um, just a ebony fretboard, but it's it's actually winge with that satin on it. And this fretboard is amazing. It's easy for me to sit here and tell you that you're not touching it, but I'm telling you from the factory, this thing feels like a million bucks on it the does. fretboard. It does. And then um, we've got a gloss finish yes, on we, that as we well. We have gloss up here. Could probably tell that, but I just wanted to point that out as well. But yeah, I think we may have gone over most of the of the stats so one other thing i wanted to mention on this so the five voice switch is a shaler mega switch so that's really good i didn't have to you know upgrade that or nothing that came with it um it does have dunlock flush dunlock flush mount uh strap locks and that came with it they actually gave me a choice of what to use what different brand and i just i, I chose the dunlocks because they look really good flush um, fretboard on this is 16 inches. Um, it plays really, j just really smooth. Turn around and let them see the back of the neck. I'm not really sure of what they call this particular neck. It is a thin, um, and for a seven, it just feels amazing. It's almost like a U. Uh, it may be considered a D. Uh, but it just feels great. You can tell it's their own design, uh, and it's almost like not having anything in your hands. Mm -hmm. So we kind of went over the specs on this guitar. I want to give you a little history of it. So long story short, I called the people um, trying to be me and buy something that they had in stock, and they didn't. So I spoke to the owners. We did email and then Instagram and finally got them on there so where I could talk to them. And uh, they did have this guitar they were building um, and it was on a line of list of six or seven that they were building for other people, but this was the owner's guitar. And I caught this guitar at the very start, so none of it was even done, and I convinced him to sell it to me. Um, I didn't really change a lot from his specs. This guitar actually was originally supposed to come with um, Titans for the pickups, and I did change that out, but that was just luck of the draw. The Titans got caught up in shipping. So they were able to get the Ragnaroks uh, from Bare Knuckle quicker. So that's what we got. I did, uh, I'm did. i not sure exactly what he was putting on there for tuners and bridge, but I did tell him I wanted all hip shot and I wanted open gear tuners. Um, I didn't really do anything. Um, this was already pre-planned, this design. Now, the one thing I did do is the color, and we went back and forth. They have the ability to do 100 colors, and I hope I'm not exaggerating, but they literally sent me 100 colors. But I saw this on a render, and I was like, man, you know what I mean? On Flamed, that gray just pops. Mm -hmm. And I don't own a gray guitar, but I do now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, this guitar was just amazing. Have you got something you can turn it up and play something just so you can hear something on the guitar? Let's see. So we, uh, on this guitar, I decided for this one, since it's 26 and a half, to not do the multi-scale version of this. And I do have another one we're going to review that is a multi-scale. And I'm not going to lie to you, I love multi-scale. Now that I start playing it, it takes Pretty a little cool. bit to get used to. Um, but I understand the, you know, the, the science behind it and why you would do it. Um, I'm going to talk for just a second, and then we're going to put this in the mix for you and let you hear it, hear what it sounds like with the Ragnaroks. Uh, so when I started talking to these people, just the customer service with this company is amazing. I did pay for this guitar. I paid half down and then half when it was ready. But you would have thought that I overpaid them three or four times for the way they treated me. Um, I got pictures every day. 
They would message me and tell me if there wasn't every day they'd message and say something. If there wasn't, you know, something new for me to see, mm-hmm. they'd just be like, hey, what are you doing? And then we would talk for a little bit via Instagram. And you'd be like, I ain't got nothing new to show you today. Try to get you something tomorrow. So that was just stupid cool. They let me know about three days ahead of time before they shipped it. Um, it did come from Austria. Um Long ways away to the United States. Just, just put it that way. I like the um, progress pictures. Yeah, the progress yeah. report the pro- of the build is like really inclusive to me. I like that a lot. So today, I got to tell on myself, I did dump like 60 or 80 pictures on my phone because it comes through Instagram of all the progress from this guitar. And I had the pictures all the way back to where this was kind of a drawing. And, and they just constantly sending you stuff every time they do something, every paint step, every pot, everything. So um, we got everything taken care of. Now, the purchase price of this guitar, I hate to tag them with a, a price, but something like this is going to be in the 3500 maybe up to four grand, depending on you know what you do on and to get it here, it, me here being in America. Right. Um, another thing, they shipped it out um, with a small carrier, and I'm not going to lie, guys, don't kill me. I was really uh, a little worried about it because it was with a little tiny carrier, um, and it took about three or four days. It just disappeared on as far as tracking. Nobody knew where it was at. Nobody knew nothing. And like on the fourth day, it just showed up in New York uh, <laughs> at the hub, and then our, our local USPS picked it up, and I literally had it in two days. Uh, it was weird. I don't know if they stuck it on a ship. I don't know if they put it in a submarine. Who knows? I don't know if they flew it, but it disappeared for four days yeah. as far as tracking goes. And the guys over there assured me that they had shipped to America before. They did all the paperwork on it, and they assured me it would be all right. But, you know, I was a little worried about it. And yeah. I was also worried, don't kill me, that USPS had it from New York to where I live because I felt like it was going to be destroyed by the time right. I got here. Took it out of the box. Like 11 days of travel, I took it out of the box. <clears throat> After it acclimated, I let it set for about a day. I didn't touch it as hard as that was. Took it out of the box, put it on the tuner, and it was in tune. Now, you're going to find out in this deal, every time I get I don't have a guitar that I go buy. Everything is shipped to me. So every guitar I get, I have a luthier about 45 minutes away from me. I trust him. Um, I'll get you guys his name at some point in the future. And uh, he does everything. As soon as I get a guitar, if it's that day, the next day, I take it straight to him. I'm like, here, man, take care of this. And so he checks everything out. This is the only guitar out of the 10 he hasn't touched. He hasn't even seen this one because <laughs> there's no need to. I check the intonation. Uh, the action on it is perfect. It's right down on the fretboard. There's no there's fret buzz. There's no dead frets. Yeah. Um, the strings are lovely, whatever they are. Yeah. Uh, it just played amazing straight out of the box. So, Ashwood, one word. I saw something the other day. I, I didn't tell you, but if you type in Ashwood into Google, <laughs> there was Ashwood Guitars. There's a little Chinese company come up and said, <laughs> Ashwood Guitars. And I was like, yeah, that ain't it. That ain't it. So these guys are kind of over in uh, Austria, right on the Slovakia border. Uh, they may even live over in Slovakia, but everything kind of came out of Austria. Um, it's a couple of different guys. I don't know how many people they got working for them, but man, are these guys on point. So this guitar costs somewhere between thirty five hundred and four grand to get it to America. Because you can't touch it and you can't see it, I guarantee you if PRS built you this guitar, it'd be $6,800. Bottom line. Now this is a 4A. So, you know, I own a, uh, a wood library, you know, 10 top, custom 24, um, f- just probably as close as you can get to the $14,000 guitars without paying for them. And uh, this, this guitar is on, on par on quality. This is a, an extremely well-built guitar. And I believe I'll, I'm, I'm older, but I believe I'll have this till the day I die. And I believe it looked just like that. Yeah, we- so... What do you think when you're playing it? How does it feel? You've got seven strings. How does it feel to you? Um, it again, like I said, it's in the pocket. I I've I usually migrate towards this one. You know, whenever I'm picking of the bunch. And again, we're excited to show you everything we've got. But I I really really like this one. 
All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to quit talking because we've been talking too much and we've been praising these guys too much, but trust me, they deserve it. Uh, we're going to let you hear it in the mix. Okay, so you got to hear a little bit of it. Uh, once again, everything we, we play here is just run through a single patch on the Quad Cortex. We don't change anything. EQ nothing. Just a high gain, probably modeled off 5150, 6505. I'm not sure. It's a preset. We didn't build it. It's just a good, for right now, it's good enough for this. I don't want to keep changing everything up to make one guitar sound better than the other. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. So do yourself a favor. We'll put a link down in the bottom. Uh, Go check these guys out. And I don't think they're running an actual website, but if you hit them on IG, you hit them on Instagram, they'll message you back. They're about seven hours ahead of America, six, seven hours ahead of you. So keep that in mind. Um, just to give you some kind of a deal, not for this video show, but I have already called them and asked them about getting another one, but not a seven this time, something different. That's the build quality on this. Um, I couldn't be happier. We've got a bunch of guitars over here, and there's no guitar over here that's bad. It just don't. It just doesn't happen at you know. A, well, I say it don't. Thank God, we haven't had it happen. So they're all good in their own way. So, what's your final thoughts on it? Um, there's not a thing I would change about it. Honestly, I I love everything about it, um, right down to the color. Well, you were a big proponent. I sent you a bunch of colors, yeah. and you were like, dude, get the gray, get the yeah. gray. Yeah, I, <laughs> I like the gray a lot. But the gray really does make this guitar look amazing. And it the does. fact that they did the back and kind of that natural with that flame maple, and I know it don't come across on this video, but, man, this thing is just amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a gorgeous guitar. Oh, and it we is. didn't show you this either. So, And, of course, because I'm on camera, I can't pop it off but it's magnetic cover. Pretty neat. And it's all sealed. So, um, here's the question we have to you. This is our second episode. We got eight more to go in the high gain series. Mm -hmm. And if it's in the high gain series or another series, and we don't really know what series is next, but we want to know what you want us to show you, what you want us to review. Um, if you'll just put it in the comments, what guitar company, uh, what guitar maker, uh, what luthier. Bear in mind, if you tell me something crazy like Arda or something like that, KD, you know mm -hmm. it's going to be six months to a year before we get one of those. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, we, we are in the process of trying to get an Arda and a KD. They won't make it for this series, but you just have to wait your line, your turn in line, man. Yeah. It's just there's so many, you know, those are real high end builders. But mm -hmm. check these guys out. Um, these guys will blow up. There will be more people than they know what to do with asking for guitars. If you ever put your hands on this, I mean, I, I don't know that you could really don't know that you could find anybody to do it you know, much better than this. I've, I've searched it. There's no flaws. There's no nothing. It's like they built it for themselves, you know? Yeah. It's an amazing guitar. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we touched much on the weight, but that's another thing that I was kind of surprised on, you know, just being a seven string. It's not as heavy as you think it is. So what he did on this one is this is a chambered body. Uh, this one is chambered and I did, he did ask me on the chambering and I said, yeah. And he goes, it'll help a lot. 
I, I haven't seen exactly where they lay the gaps out and where it's set in there, but this thing doesn't weigh anything compared to most seven strings. Yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to give you, if we can do it without banging guitars, <laughs> we're going to give you a sneak peek of what's coming in episode three. And I think you're going to really be amazed, especially if you don't know who this builder is. So ladies and gentlemen, we would like you to introduce you to Reichart Guitars. Um, this is an American builder. And once again, this is beyond perfection. Um, there's not enough good stuff to say about this guitar. We're going to go into all that later. Um, and maybe during midweek, we'll put up a little sample of it so you can hear it. Uh, just an amazing build. I called him with an idea. He just took it and ran with it, and uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't be happier. So that will be coming in episode three. You want to give him some finals on that one? Let me, like, play it. Yeah, you got your... Oh, well, not we don't... It's in. not plugged <laughs> up right now. So go check these guys out. Go to Ashwood. Message them. Um, I've owned, you know, high-end Gibsons, Jacksons, ESPs, custom shops, custom shop, you know, tellies. And I had all that at one time years ago, and I ended up selling every bit of that stuff. And it wasn't because it was bad. I just found that there was, you know, when you pay that much for one of the big names to do you a custom <clears throat> shop guitar, most of the time it's more than, you know, from a luthier, majority of the time. And you get the guitar and um, it feels like an assembly line guitar. Yeah. And there's something else I want to say real quick. You don't have to spend the kind of money we're spending to get good playing guitars. But what you have to do is your homework. And in my experience on guitars that are entry level, mid range, you really need to put your hands on them. Yeah. You need to go over them before you buy them because just because it's at Musician's Friend or Guitar Center, it don't mean you're getting a quality instrument that's actually been you know checked out and uh, yeah, and you're sh you're definitely not going to get any shipping parameters <laughs> man the last i got one one time and it was just literally thrown in a box and it come all the way across the country and i'm like really guys yeah. that's what you do to the guitar but anyway we appreciate you guys hanging out we try to make this one a little bit shorter sorry if it didn't get there um ashwood guitars this check is a out. valkyrie seven they make a lot of different stuff. Um, go check these guys out, man. I promise you, I will give you my word on this. You will not be disappointed. That's a that's a fantastic guitar. Yeah. And uh, the guys at Ashwood, we appreciate you a lot. And once again, they didn't know we were doing a review. Uh, we never told any of these builders that we were reviewing guitars until after we got them in. So we have two more still on the way. They'll be here before the end of the um, the review session. Uh, for this series, and then we're going to go on to something else. So once again, the question, what do you want to see us review? Yeah, what do you want to see? Or even what, what's your favorite guitar? Yeah, but what guitar would you like to see a review on? Maybe yeah. I mean, YouTube's full of reviews, but what guitar would you like to see a review on? And we will do our best to try to figure out if we get one that, you know, overrides the rest of them. We'll do our best to try to get it for you and try to give you an in-depth review on it. Uh, that's all the time we got for episode three. My name is Rob. My name's Colton. And we appreciate you watching Fret Not. Did I say episode three? Pretty sure. Well, that ain't good. I don't know. Maybe you said episode two. <laughs> yeah, that ain't good. All right. So that was this was episode two. And I expect you to be back here for episode three. Mm -hmm. All right. You guys have a great evening. Stay tuned.